Welcome to Kick-Ass Conversations with Louise and Kim. I am Kim. I'm Louise. And we are joined today by Shelly Smartly. We're so excited to have a conversation today. Go ahead and drop into the comments where you are joining us from. Um, and we're going to dive right into our conversation like we normally do. What, Louise and Shelly, what are you celebrating this week? What are you excited about and grateful for? Well, let's have Louise go first. <laughs> you bet. Um, today, and, and I think this whole week, um, I'm going to celebrate uh, action and getting the support and help that I need to make that happen, right? I think so often we can get stuck in this place of like, I got to do all of the things all of the time. And there are people and tools and resources out there that can just make things easier. And so with a little bit of ease into my week, um, I've been like on fire. So I want to celebrate that. I, I think it's about reaching out. Uh, maybe it's about reaching out for help where I need it in all kinds of ways. So um, that's been kind of the highlight of my week. And, and I'm celebrating that I did that. I put like that uh, I have to do it. Uh, all the time aside, and uh, I'm embracing uh, the people and the technology to, to help me um, do the things I want to do. So it's been fantastic. It's been a really fun week for me. Ah, I love that for you, Louise, particularly off of the conversation that we had last week. Um, you shared a little bit of your snowblower story of kind of having to do it yourself and, mm -hmm. and needing to dig in and figure things out. So the fact that you're finding some ease and utilizing tools and individuals to help create that ease. I love that for you. Yay, I'm celebrating with you. <laughs> Thank you. That's terrific. Yeah. Shelly, how about you? What are you celebrating? Oh, we're celebrating just about being done with season two of the Smartly's comedy TV series. So we're very excited. It, it's a dream come true to have even gotten season one out, not to mention being able to steaming right on and doing season two. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, my goodness. That sounds fantastic. I'm so excited for you as well. And we're going to learn more about the Smartly's um, TV show in just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, absolutely celebrating. Um, I have my background in theater and film and television production. So understand trying to get something launched like that is a really, really big deal. So mazel mm -hmm. tov. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am celebrating being on vacation. <clears throat> so after coming off of the month of February, where I struggled through RSV through most of the month, I questioned whether or not I actually go on vacation this week, which I had scheduled because it's March break here, spring break here uh, in Montreal. And um, I said, yeah, I am. I'm going to take vacation. And as we talked about last week, um, sick is not rest. Um, yeah. Vacation allows for rest. And so I allowed myself some time to truly rest. Like I didn't get out of bed until almost nine o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. What? And then I had an hour long, like a whole block of an hour and 20 minutes for exercise. I know I have like 22 minutes that I can fit it in normally. So <laughs> leaning in fully and being in vacation mode for myself and allowing myself the space to do what I want to do this week has been huge. And I'm totally celebrating that and, and encourage you to do the same. <laughs> Well, really, right? Like it. sometimes we do, we treat our illness, we treat our time away from work, uh, away from our business as, as just away time. Um, when it's really, it's really not, it's, it's that our energy is put somewhere else, right? Our energy is put into that healing, um, when we're ill. Um, and it's not a break at all. Um, it's not getting away. It, it sometimes is actually even more stressful, um, when, when you can do that. So, um, yay for you, Kim, um, and really stepping into that to say like, yeah, like I still need this time away, um, to, to really dive mm -hmm. in and recover your energy, which, uh, will segue into our topic. <laughs> well, but first we have to learn more about Shelly. Well, so I don't know much about Shelly, 
I know Shelly and the Smartleys have this fabulous uh, YouTube channel. Um, there's lots of comedy uh, that goes on there. Shelly, I know that you uh, were a stand-up comedian um, and have integrated that into your business, um, but you also had a whole other life uh, too uh, outside of doing that. Um, so I would love to hear um, more about, about you, about how you who are you and how did you get to where you are? Like it, it just, it feels so fun and energizing um, that I, I just, I need to know more. <laughs> well, now I'm a 74 year old uh, creator of a TV series that's airing worldwide on, on Tubi and, and uh, all sorts of things. Uh, we have very many uh, free streaming platforms that we're on worldwide now. Uh, but uh it was a convoluted process for me to get here. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, which is sometimes the same as being a serial failure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> leaping from one misadventure to another in my life. Uh, but when I was in my mid 40s, I was diagnosed with a terminal illness. And I was told that I had three to five years left to live. There was no treatment and no cure. I was also bedridden for a year and I could only like be up and out of bed for about 15 minutes a day. And the rest of the time I was in uh, either in bed or in a wheelchair. And that was actually one of the best experiences of my life uh, because it really got me grounded with what we can do and what we can't do. And I realized that I had to focus only on what I could do and completely and entirely forget about what I couldn't do. And so if somebody else could do it, I didn't. And I figured the one thing that I, and, and I figured that I had to focus on my most unique talent. You know, what is the most unique thing that I can contribute to the universe? What talents do I have? that maybe other people don't have or, or the talents that I have are, that are in the most abundance in me to focus on those because our talents are what brings us energy when we focus on them. And I needed energy most of all. Uh, so uh, during that time, as long as I was just laying in bed, there was nothing else to do. I made a list of 100 things that I could do in bed. <laughs> and other than just sit there and moan and groan and say, oh, my God, life is over. I feel so sorry for me. Um, and so, uh, I, I mean, I could do my nails. I could call a friend. I could write a thank you letter. You know, I had all sorts of things that I could do. And But one of the things on my list was that I could write a book, which was a pretty alarming thought for me, but I couldn't watch TV. I couldn't tolerate listening to the radio. I couldn't tolerate bright lights. And I had nothing better to do than sit there with my imagination. Well, you can be imagining good things or you can be imagining bad things. And our, our imagination is a choice that we very often abuse by imagining what the worst thing could be or, you know, how people are not going to accept me or uh, my business is going to fail or, you know, uh, all that sort of stuff. So instead, I set my mind to imagining uh, a romance novel. And I had, at the same time that I was ill, I had suffered through a 35 point IQ loss. So I was back to the point where I could only write at the fifth grade level. But Happy for me, romance novels are written at the fifth grade level. <laughs> <laughs> New facts. <laughs> and, and so what could, what could be finer? And so I, I got a notebook paper and a candle because I could tolerate candlelight. And uh, when I was awake, and, you know, I spent a lot of time resting, of course. But when I was awake, I wrote out ideas and stories and started writing the book. And I wrote a romance novel that year. Wow, um, that's amazing. Which now it, it's actually turned out it was a comedy romance novel. And when I got better, I put it on the shelf and we dusted it off last year. Our director of our TV show read the book and uh, we want to make a movie or a mini series out of it now because it's so fun. Um, and I think everything that's come out of my life since that time, I, I went on from there when I got a little bit better. I formed a, 
uh, I made a, I went to a support group uh, for my rare disease. And when I walked in the door, they said, you know, I, I, I told them, I said, you know, it was really, really hard to find this support group. You should, you guys should have a website. And they said, that's a great idea. Why don't you do it? <laughs> and I was like, I can't do that. I have a 35 point IQ loss. I don't know what the internet is. The internet was brand new at the time. It took me six months to learn how to make a web, how to make a link work uh, and to make a web page. But I did it mm -hmm. because I had nothing better to do. And it was using my most unique talent to figure out how to do it. And I needed to recover from, uh, you know, my cognitive losses. And the only way to do that is to apply yourself. Um, and so from my web page, uh, four years later, it turned into an international nonprofit agency. Uh, it was called the International Scleroderma Network. Mm -hmm. And we had over 2,000 pages and 23 languages and support around the world. And it was a wonderful thing to do to reach out to others and to uh, it helped me recover. And it helped me not to feel sorry for myself when I was surrounded by people who had it even worse than me. Uh, and I think that that's an important thing for all of us is to overcome self-pity, you know. Uh, even when we're completely healthy, it's very easy to feel self-pity that, oh, I don't have the wardrobe that my friends have. Oh, I'm not driving the right kind of car. or I'm not living in the right part of town. Or I, I don't have this. I don't have that. We tend to look at lack. But when we focus on people who have it worse than us, uh, we can more focus on our abundance and deal from that. Yeah, that, you know, when I'm hearing your story, that, that very optimistic, like, outlook, that you had it really does start to open up all kinds of doors that we didn't even know was there and right and it starts with like a tiny little seed a tiny little ray of optimism right your list of a hundred things um right to keep you grounded to keep you present in the moment so that you're not off right catastrophizing like what's mm -hmm. gonna happen when you don't really know and so finding that bringing it back to like what can i do right now what are the what are some of the things that um and, and they don't have to be big right they don't have to be these huge things but this this very optimistic right approach that you had or like there are a hundred things i can do while i'm lying here in bed and that just mm -hmm. led to you seeing the next thing and seeing the next thing and seeing the next thing um, mm -hmm. I think that's so, it's such a, I don't know, like, here's the sunshine shining in. It is really much that sunshine that you created though, right? Like you created that, um, break in the clouds. But, but I think that we're all responsible for creating our own sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can have absolutely everything, all the abundance and blessings of the universe on you. But if you don't see it, if you don't appreciate it. It doesn't matter. Uh, well, you can be extremely wealthy and very depressed. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the growth mindset, right? Because we can have we can have these limiting beliefs no matter what our circumstances are. And when we yeah. shift into that growth mindset, we're able to create that abundance for ourselves. We're able to create that sunshine for ourselves, regardless of our circumstances. Right. And and that also then allows us, right? And this is where people talk about how do you manifest things in your life? Well, you mm -hmm. manifest, it starts with having a growth mindset and then taking actions based on that growth mindset. You're, you had this growth mindset to say, what else can I do but lay here and, and just be? And you came up with a hundred things to do. And of one of those things was to write a, a romance novel. And that romance novel led to the next step and the next step and the next step that just kept mm -hmm. you taking action and moving forward. And so here you are manifesting mm -hmm. the life and quite literally life in, in what your circumstances mm -hmm. that you wanted to be living. You may not know the how or the what the, the outcome was going to be, but you were very much creating, it sounds like, your own life in that moment and continue to do so. Right. And I, I think one important thing is when I looked over my list of 100 things that I could do in bed, 
I asked myself, what is the most unique thing that mm -hmm. I could do that somebody else could not do? Yeah. Nobody else could write the romance novel that I would write. <laughs> right, because that was what's in your brain. Right. And anybody else could call a friend, anybody else could write a thank you letter. And I'm not saying any of these things are bad or that I didn't do them, um, but they were not what I focused on because they were not the most unique thing that I could contribute uh, to the universe. And, and so when we're looking over what we wanna do with our life, I think a really super important question is, what can I do you know, what skill do I have that is my most unique one? Yeah. Yeah. Cause we all have this gift, right? Like what we do, who we are is a gift. Um, yeah. And then how do, how do we bring that into the world? Right. Because nobody else has this gift that is us. And then we get to figure out, first of all, what is that gift that we give and then who are we giving it to? Um, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think figuring that out is scary for a lot of people. I know it's scary for a lot of people. Right. Because it's all been. Done. So you sat there and said, this is my unique gift. I can write this romance novel. And you recognized that it was going to be unique because it was coming from you. Other people will have said, but people have written romance novels before. That's not unique. And yet to recognize your uniqueness in what you bring, you could have chosen. I could write a thank you or a, a, a letter to all of my friends. And mm -hmm. each letter would be unique. And so that could have been your unique gift that you brought yeah. into the world. It absolutely could have. But I, I think I picked the hardest, most unique thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just well, a sucker for a challenge. <laughs> I was going to say, why, why was that? Why did you pick the, the most challenging? Uh, because I think that, that it drew the most upon me. It was the most inspiring. It takes an awful lot of inspiration to move from a state of severe fatigue and overwhelming illness, uh, you need to have something that you can reach out to that's greater than you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you, you just do. And at the same time that I was going through that, um, my late husband was um, on oxygen for 10 years before he had a lung transplant. And later on, he passed away from leukemia. Um, after he had his lung transplant, we moved from Minnesota to beautiful downtown, lovely San Diego, California. <laughs> and uh, we were like little two little kids in a candy shop at that point. And he was able to just uh, totally embrace and love life with being able to live without oxygen for a few years mm -hmm. before he passed away from leukemia. And um, we were in a new uh, state then. We didn't have any relatives nearby. We only had a few new friends. And uh, I needed to reestablish a social life. And I was still also dealing with very severe chronic illness and running the nonprofit agency. And so I started reaching out, doing all the little things that I could, like dog owners have a better social life than I had at the time because it had been so completely devoted to caregiving. And, but I had a cat and the cat wouldn't like me to have a dog around, but I figured out if I, I put, I made a great big sign and I said, free treats for neighborhood dogs who do tricks. And I put it on my patio. So all the neighborhood dogs and, and owners came by. And when I'd see them on the patio getting the treats, I'd run out and have the dog do a few tricks and give a treat. And I was able to meet a lot of my neighbors that way. And then I wanted to do artwork, which had been put aside for so many years, focusing on, you know, illness and the nonprofit and everything. But it's a lonely activity. And I wasn't in a position where I should be doing lonely activities. And I think it's important for us, especially the introverts in the crowd, mm -hmm. to recognize that there are times when we cannot allow ourselves to sink into the introversion. And so I asked the complex where I live if I could put on an open art studio. And so they said, sure. And so for two hours a week, uh, we had a time where all the residents could come and work on any art project that they wanted. And that provided me with um, more friends and something to do. And again, it was focusing on creativity because when you're painting or drawing or 
creating anything like that, you're also contributing your most unique talent. Mm -hmm. um, so Shelly, I have a question for you. And this leads to the conversation, uh, the topic that we have today. I Coming through a terminal illness and caregiving for um, your husband and mm -hmm. going through all of this and yet creating all these different things at the same time, how did you draw upon your inner energy to keep you moving forward? I think I continually focused or refocused on the most important thing, whatever that was at the time. Um, and oh, and I must say, uh, two weeks after my husband uh, passed away, uh, I, I felt an overwhelming craving. I had to laugh again. My life had been so serious for so long. Um, I just had to be able to find that laughter and the lighter side of life again. If I did not, I knew that I would not recover from that grief, that I would not recover from that blow uh, between my health and, and everything else that had gone on. And so I sought out laughter by going to a stand-up comedy show. And I think, I think that that's an extremely unusual thing for a new widow to do. But I'm really proud of the fact that I listened to myself and what I needed. And I sought it out, even though I had never been to a stand-up comedy show in my life. And I was 65 years old. And I was in a strange town. And I didn't know where the shows were. And I didn't let any of that stop me. I still went out and I found a show and. Fortunately, in San Diego, tons of great comedy shows are free and nearly and I loved it. And I was able to laugh again. And I found a camaraderie among the people. And um, it might have helped that I didn't have a TV set, so I couldn't sit home and wallow in a TV at the time. And I went to comedy shows almost every night of the week for about five years before. And then during that time, I also finally got treatment for my illness, uh, which had been very, very, very long overdue. You know, when I was first diagnosed, they said there was no treatment and it was terminal and forget it. Well, I had fortunately lingered around long enough <laughs> that they actually came up with some treatments and they actually got me completely properly diagnosed for a change. And uh, so then when I got my treatment, though, it was a nurse uh, with an IV trailing me around for seven hours a day, five days a week that I had my infusions. Mm -hmm. And that was nonstop, you know, and that was projected to be for the rest of my life. Well, that was very serious. And so to recover from that, I made darn sure to go to a comedy show every night because I had to laugh. Uh, and, and I had to see the lighter side of things. And I think that the more serious our life can be, the more important it is for us to lighten up on it and not to take it so seriously. You know, to take it with a grain of salt, to, you know, to take our troubles as though they're butterflies and let them fly away. Mm -hmm. um, and so after five years of that, I was, I finally became healthy enough that I could not use my health as an excuse for not getting out there and seeing if I could make other people laugh. And so I became a stand-up comedian at age 69. Love that. And I, I love that it ties into what you said in terms of resourcing your energy, in terms of kind of continuing to pull up into that energy of yourself, even though you were dealing with significant health problems, you, you could figure out for yourself what that most important thing was. And for you at that time, it was laughter. It was, it was mm -hmm. finding some joy through laughter. Mm -hmm. And it still is. Yeah. Uh, later, later that year, I came up with the idea for the Smartly's comedy TV series. Uh, within one month, we had produced, produced our first sizzle clip. Within six months, we had produced our first pilot. And we were just about ready to shop that around to the studios and things like that, what you could do with the TV show, when the pandemic hit. And we had produced our pilot with a cast of 15 on a stage in front of a live audience in a senior center. And there was absolutely nothing. We could not go forward with that with the pandemic. You can't do that. 
so we had to throw everything out and I had to rewrite season one of the Smartleys from scratch uh, so that we could produce it under the conditions of the pandemic. And we did that. And during the pandemic, we actually produced season one of the Smartleys, even though I could not be in the room with another actor uh, sure. because of severe autoimmune disease. Yeah. Uh, regardless, uh, I'm still in the show. <laughs> and we figured out how to keep all of our actors alive under the conditions of the pandemic by having them self film. And then we combined their performances digitally to make something that was funny. And that's all that we focused on. We focused on whether or not it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's so interesting because you, you talk about like finding that one thing, right. And, and how simple, it is when we when we when we grab hold of it we're like oh like of course of course laughter right like it feels mm -hmm. like an, uh, of course um but it can get really hard to try to like it, we overcomplicate so many things right and and finding a way through that um and finding that thing like for you is laughter right mm -hmm. that tied into um your most unique talent uh, right. Again, you're you're shining through that. Um, and you said earlier too, Shelley, is that when we are using our most unique talent, that it does give us energy. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and yeah, I literally found energy. I mean, it's mm -hmm. certainly I, I cannot, you know, underestimate my medical treatments. I still have infusions to this day. Uh, now, fortunately, they're only lengthy, but two times a week uh, instead of every day. So I'm every day I wake up and count my blessings. Oh, I don't have to have an infusion for seven hours today. <laughs> you know, life is good. Uh, and, and I think it helps if we have a bad, if our the ruler that we measure ourselves against in life is something that um, works to our advantage. Um, instead of like, measuring ourselves against, I don't know, I'm losing my train of thought. Why doesn't somebody else pick it up? So what I'm hearing there, right, is that place of comparison and how comparison can be depleting. So what yes. I'm hearing you say. Yes, yes, that, that's the best way to put it. Um, and when you can uh, wake up every day and compare yourself to when you were in bed for a whole year and you thought life was completely over, um, but you can get out of bed that day you're a success with that first step on the floor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I love this idea of, um, you know, finding these places in our lives that, that bring us energy, right? Um, oftentimes we have these little leaks in our bucket that we don't, we don't mm -hmm. recognize. And so mm -hmm. one way to, to, to do that is to pour more, into our bucket, right? So we kind of top it up. But another way is to like plug the leak is to find that space that's taking our time, our attention, our energy, or whatever that is, um, to take it away. And to say mm -hmm. that, that if I can plug it, um, I, it's not leaking. I am gonna naturally have that bucket fill up. Um, and so there's these, these two things, these two dynamics at play. Right. Is that finding the the thing that adds to your energy. Right. And for you, mm -hmm. that the laughter. Right. Mm -hmm. And stepping into your most unique talent and then finding a way to plug um, that energy. And what I heard you say was just having a lot of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I would say that it helps all of us to have a mission. Um, because a mm -hmm. mission can get us out of bed in the morning. Uh, and but missions are something that we have to create for ourselves. And my mission is to spread joy throughout the world out of gratitude for people who have donated blood because it saved my life and, and extended the lives of others that I've loved. And so, I mean, I I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for people who have taken the time and the energy and donated the most precious part of their self, you know, their blood uh, and how it keeps other people alive without that. I would not be here today. Um, 
And uh, I'm, I'm just extremely grateful. And I want to spread that joy that I found uh, throughout the whole world. And I feel just overwhelmingly blessed that I'm able to do that through the Smartleys. So it's interesting because I'm what I'm hearing there is the gratitude um, comes from a recognition of what you've been able to receive. Yes. And and you, so you've been resourced that way, right? Energetically resourced, yes. both literally and figuratively from, yes. from others. And yes. therefore, you're able to then pour out into the world to resource others. So it becomes yes. this beautiful. And it comes cycle. back to you. It creates yes. an unending cycle. Um, but it wouldn't have begun unless I had first identified um, the fact that um, that I had a mission, that I needed to have a mission, and that missions are good for us. And, and can you identify, you know, I, I would hope that every person listening to this can sit for a minute and identify, okay, well, if I had a mission today, what would it be? Why am I getting out of bed? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I putting on my clothes? Why am I going to work? Why am I doing this? Why am I cooking dinner? What's the motive behind it? What am I... What's my reason for being? Yeah. 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 I talk a lot uh, to my clients about their purpose, right? And, mm -hmm. and your your capital P purpose um, and your small P purpose, right? And and when those two things can combine, yes, I said small P. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when you, I liked that there was a capital and a small. I was like, There's yeah, small. that's true because there is. <laughs> Because there's so much in the world that's about the capital P, like find your meaning and purpose, find your meaning. But I, so my smile was that <laughs> small P purpose is really important and we very often overlook it. That was what the smile was yeah. about. Um, yeah, but I, I think too, right? It's like, and it's how do we bring those two things together, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's not, you know, when you said Shelly too, it's not like, you know, the seriousness of some of the, the weight we put on some of the things, the weight that we put on our relationship with work, the weight that we put on our business, um, all of that weight, that seriousness um, pulls us down. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Like we're not um, rocket scientists or brain surgeons like it's not it's it's not meant to be so serious. Are there risks? Sure. Are there consequences and implications? Yes. Do we want to make an impact? Do we want to, right? All of those things. Absolutely. But when we put so much weight and expectation on something like that, it really does weigh us down. And in order for us to move forward, we need to lip, be lifted up right? We mm -hmm. need to have a lightness to it. And we, sometimes we just dump too much on those things in our lives, on those relationships in our lives. Um, and when we can connect with something with a lightness, right. And then, mm -hmm. and laughter is, is the doorway, um, often to that lightness of being. And, and if you want to, you know, like my mission is being spreading joy. You can't be spreading joy so seriously. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what is the purpose? So, so I would encourage people to have part of their mission being something that's lighthearted. Yeah. You know, I, I work in the social impact, social justice space a lot with my clients. And so there's a lot of seriousness that comes with that, yeah. obviously trying to, to, to solve the biggest problems of, that humanity faces. And very often what's getting in their way and kind of getting them jammed up is that they're focusing on meaning and purpose. What I am here to make a difference in this way. This is the most important, you know, at, mm -hmm. through your nonprofit, this is the most important thing that I do. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is let's take it actually underneath that. Why are we so devoted to those things? What is it? So for me, I I am devoted. I am my my purpose in the world is to create a, a better human experience, to help us come together as humanity to create a better world for future generations and hopefully ours as well. That's a really big mission. Yeah. But my devotion under that is love and transformation and joy and magic. I mean, for mm -hmm. magic is in there. And that's yeah. where the playfulness comes in. Because if we mm -hmm. don't have those things where we find, as you just said, the lightness in it, we can't do the heavy work that needs to be done in this world. 
Yes. Because it weighs down too heavily. Yeah. If you take things too seriously, it, it's, it drains the energy. And of course, as you can tell, my, my whole life has been about accumulating and sharing energy instead of draining it off. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. This has been so, such an interesting look. You know, when we put out this topic of resourcing your energy, it could have gone in any different direction because mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of different ways to look at this. And what I've loved, and, and I'm jumping right into my go golden nugget here. So, you know, we'll, well, I guess we're at golden nugget time. <laughs> what I'm taking from this is this beautiful sense of our energy comes from that place where, where our big mission and our very personal mission come to play, right? It's mm -hmm. that here's how I want to make a difference in the world. And I can be resourced by these places of lightness. Mm -hmm. And so combining those two to me is this amazing space that we've kind of been playing in, in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, my golden nugget was something you said early on, Shelly, was around your most unique talent, right? That's your mutt. I love that. Your M-U-T. Because um, I have a new puppy and uh, <laughs> you know, why not? Um, and, and when we can take the time to understand what is that gift that we have to give, it actually is a place that provides us energy, right? It's actually mm -hmm. like, and, and it, then it starts that cycle. When we're in that place, we're just humming along and we're getting energy from what we're doing and we're giving energy and we're getting it and we're giving it. And it's just this mm -hmm. really beautiful place. But it all starts from this recognition of like, what's my most unique talent, right? Like I'm a unicorn here in the world. And so where do I want to show up um, and, and make, whatever, smiles, laughter, whatever, you, align that, right, with your purpose. And I, and I just, I love that um, because I, I don't think we think enough about our uniqueness. We try to blend in. We try to be the same. Um, mm -hmm. so that's a really good reminder for everyone um, to, to focus on that uniqueness that we all possess. Uh, and which as like an, an entertainer or a stand up comedian, the last thing on earth you want to do is fit in because uh, it makes you unmemorable. Mm -hmm. And and to really stand out in any field, you need to be the most unique you that you can. And too much of our life is spent on trying to conform way too much. Oh, yeah. we, we should be focused more on not conforming and following our own inner guidance. That's beautiful. Yeah. Any final thoughts or any other golden nuggets that you want to share with our listeners, Shelley? Yeah, I would just encourage people, no matter what it is that's in front of them, to do what they can see. And and that's a, a slogan that, that guided me through my journey and, and still today. Like, what can I do with the energy that I have today? Just do a little bit. It doesn't, you don't uh, climb a mountain all in one step. It, it's just a little tiny bit at a time. And, and uh, everything that I have done has been just a little tiny bit at a time because I can't do huge amounts of things. But even with that, I've been able to write, create, and produce a television show that's airing worldwide and making people laugh worldwide. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's beyond my wildest dreams. But yet again, it was my dream. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. So Lovely. follow your dreams. Yeah. Beautifully said. Lovely. Lovely. Um, Shelly, where can folks, uh, where can folks find you? Where's the best place that people can tune in? Well, just Google the Smartlies or go to the smartlies.com and that's smart L Y S dot com. There's no apostrophe, but it's always an S at the end. And uh, you, you can find us on Tubi TV, Plex TV, Momento TV, uh, Pizzazz TV, Typhoon TV. You can even rent us on Exposure Plus TV. I mean, we're all around the world and we're rolling out onto new platforms all the time. Uh, season one is out and we're just about ready to launch season two. We're also in a podcast for people who prefer to just listen. Uh, and there's um, 
Some people prefer to listen to the show and, and they get more out of it that way using their own imagination. Some people like to watch it and some people like to do both. <laughs> I happen to be one of those that likes to do both. Tell us just a little bit about the Smart Lease. Oh, the, the premise of the Smart Lease is that Eric and I win $300 million and retire as king and queen of the Minnesota Renaissance Fair. I mean, so, who doesn't want to watch that? <laughs> I mean, really? And and we buy a luxury beachfront complex on in La Jolla, California, which is in San Diego, where our entire family lives. And, we, you know, we're a nice, loving, caring family. So, of course, everybody is out to kill us uh, or scam us from our money any way that they can. And so uh, every day the question is, how is somebody going to kill us or how is somebody going to scam us from our money? Uh, who's going to do what in Smartlyville? And uh, it's it just a nice setup. We have a cast of 15 wonderful actors and comedians from around the U.S. and Canada um, that uh, just light up the screen. They have wonderful chemistry and we're just so very proud of them. I, I just hope everybody can see them. And um, we're, we say that we're retro futuristic comedy for otherwise intelligent life forms. <laughs> <laughs> so and if you can unpack of, that, this show is for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. We're completely unique. We're, we're like old fashioned comedy, but in a newfangled way. Love that. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much, Shelly, for joining us today um, here on Kick-Ass Conversations. It absolutely was a kick-ass conversation. Uh, I am so grateful for you. Uh, you made me laugh today um, and will make me laugh um, when I check out the show for sure. Um, so thank you so much for uh, sharing your thoughts, your story uh, with us. Um, it's been uh, absolutely uh, a beautiful way to spend um, a few minutes uh, of my day anyways chatting with you. So thank you. Well, it's thank been an you. absolute joy and a pleasure to meet both of you, Louise and Kim. I'm just really impressed with the outreach that you've been doing that's affecting and, and helping people all around the world. And, and I think that that is just marvelous. And I, I just hope you continue to inspire more people to follow their dreams and make the best of their life. Oh, thank you so much, Shelly. Um, we are excited. Um, it was a joy having you today. And next week, we're going to be talking about creating and maintaining momentum. I have a feeling some of the things that we talked about in our conversation today will be pulled forward with that. And we're going to be joined by Anya uh, Khan um, on a very special next Friday. It's um, my birthday. It's her birthday. Hello, happy birthday. So we're these Pisces have to stick together. Mine was last week, <laughs> hers is next week. So uh, we are super excited to be having another kick-ass conversation next week. And for now, Shelly, thank you again for being here, for sharing your story and sharing your light and joy with us and with the world. And we look forward to seeing you and all of our listeners next week. Okay. Thank Thanks you very much. Bye-bye.